In Process Designer, we're going to create a new process that will grab both account and contact information from Salesforce, which is a cloud-based CRM application, and write them to an on-premise SQL 2008 database for someone downstream who could then use them for business analytics and reporting. To get started, we create a process and give it a name, and then we can adjust the process design canvas by simply dragging and dropping the steps around. You can also zoom in and out based on the complexity and number of steps in your process. The attributes and properties of each step is configured using the configuration console panel at the bottom of the screen. Every process has a start and a stop, and to get started, we're going to add a map step to gather and transfer the account information from Salesforce. The first thing we're going to do is go over to our palette and drag the transformation step onto the workspace. We right click and then click the gear icon to launch the map editor. We name our map and click create, and then we can choose our source Salesforce dataset, which I created earlier. Here's the schema and all the available fields that we can migrate. Next, we're going to choose our target, and this is an account SQL database that I also created earlier. In Map Designer, the source fields are displayed on the left and the target fields on the right. You can manually connect the fields if they're named differently by dragging and clicking, but in our case I use the same field names so I'll click on the Auto Map feature. We'll let it map all the fields and we'll give it a few seconds to run. Now all my fields are mapped. Now I want to run and test my map to make sure that it's built correctly. So I'll create a simple runtime configuration, give it a name, adjust my logging level, I can confirm my connection to my sources and my target, and then save the configuration and click Run. The Event Console Monitor shows the process processing in real time. You can see that we only had 12 accounts in my Salesforce install, so it took less than a second, and it says that it finished OK. Now you can see in the console below that our map step now contains the map associations and the data set links in the configuration console. Now that you've seen the process run once, I'm going to run through it again, but this time very quickly. Instead of choosing the accounts, I'm going to choose the contact data sets and map their fields. I choose my data sets, go ahead and auto map the fields, set up my runtime configuration, and when I run it, there are 20 contacts and it's run successfully. Now that this map's built correctly, I'll go ahead and close Map Designer. And so now we can set up our workflow. We click on the link icon and we drag and link each step. Some of my steps were too close here, so I'm going to go ahead and adjust the workspace so that my process is all visible. And now we can test the whole process. Just like in Map Designer, we need to create a runtime configuration, but this time for the whole process. And I'm going to bump the login to debug in case I have any issues. If you forget like I did, you can see that it prompted me to save the configuration before it ran. Now the real-time monitor shows the 12 accounts processed fine, and scrolling down a little further, we can see that the 20 contacts processed as well, all with no errors. Although this was a relatively simple process, you can build longer and much more complex workflows, such as this process that creates a table, inserts sales and partner records into the table, then inserts the record into SAP, and updates the data back into Salesforce. You can also build in more graceful error handling. This process adds a decision step to automatically send an email if a record transfer fails. You can also branch and set up loops and bidirectional data flows, all in a single reusable process. And that's Process Designer. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.